Juliet Blake brought the book to me. I heard about the book. We thought it would be a fantastic thing to partner with DreamWorks. The idea of being able to work with Stephen again, I'd always carried that inside myself just to do anything. You know, when I was auditioning for The Color Purple, I never expected to be in it, but I would have been happy just to carry his script, to carry water, to do anything to, to, to work with him. So uh, I, I felt that it was something that the two of us would be interested in, that story of, of the family moving itself and being able to um, speak to not just what, what it means to be a family, but what it means to be a family of the world. Anybody who gets out of a chair and makes some kind of an effort to walk across the street to meet someone that they've always wanted to meet or to say hello to someone they're afraid of, it takes effort to get out of your chair. And that 100-foot journey represents everything that we go through, whether it has to do with food yeah. or love or children or friendship, you have to make an effort. Yeah. You have to walk a distance in order to achieve something of value for yourself. I thought that Stephen Knight, who wrote the screenplay, who adapted the book, uh, on paper it was a cinematic journey. I mean, the way he described the food, yeah, and the way lush. he described, it felt lush, lush. and the ambience of that of, of that countryside, that amazing, you know, French countryside. Oh my God! Uh, when was, I was there, it, was, I was I, I when I was there, it's like. It's like something you dreamed. Right. I can't. I, I, I thought. I thought how fantastic. You know, you're talking about creating a family, but how fantastic that the film family gets to actually work in that atmosphere. Right, right. And it wasn't, you know, just like a Hollywood backlot or something. Right, that it right. was it the was real the, deal. It was. It was. They shot it where it where it happened, um, where it happened in Stephen Wright's imagination. Then when Lassa Lassa Hellstrom came on board to direct the picture. And, and with his incredible, you know, sort of, sort of knowledge and, and, and grasp of cinema. Why did you want it to be him? Well, for, for one thing, I loved, I still love, one of my favorite movies of all time is My Life as a Dog. Ooh, and I, yes. have, I have been a fan of uh, losses yeah. from the beginning of his, his life mm -hmm. as a filmmaker. And, of course, so many other movies that he's made, like Shock a Lot. Lhasa has... Um, is a stickler for the details. And what Lhasa, what really turns him on as an artist, as a filmmaker, is finding those little asides that aren't central to the screenplay, that aren't, that isn't the theme of the scene he's shooting, but it's something that a child does in the background. It's a little smile that the younger brother gives to, to Hassan, his older brother. Yes. It's those little details that I knew that Lhasa, from his other work, was going to pepper, if I can use a... Yeah. Although pepper is, you don't put pepper on everything. Just, <laughs> yes, no. But he was going to season the movie yes, with all these little uh, sort of sort of nuances and details and was going to make the movie even more special than it was on the page. That's a perfect analogy, I think, because that's exactly what you feel when you, when you finish the film. <laughs>